Hello quilty friends, welcome back to my sewing room. And today I am doing I am doing episode number 36 in the Sew Your Stash series. And it is also week 24 in the Scrappiness is Happiness quilt along for this book. And this is the patchwork star right here. And it is in the patchwork flag in my book. So Let's look at page 162 and look at the block. So here's the block right here, as you can see, and here's that block right here. And it is a 16 inch block, okay? And then we put it into this flag quilt right here. And so here's the flag quilt. And it measures 96 wide by 72 inches tall. And you saw that um, sitting on, uh, hanging, not sitting. It's sitting right here. But you saw the full flag hanging on my design wall. So what I wanted to tell you about this, I wanted to show you this picture right here. Is you can see that this all consists of squares. This whole quilt, you just need squares to do, okay? This is a scrappy flag quilt that I did years ago, and so I wanted to put it in my book and show you how fun and easy it is to do. And so this block is super simple to do, so I'm going to be showing you different sizes, but I also want to talk about squares again. So um, let me set that aside for a second. So what I wanted to show you is that you don't, you know, we happen to do it with the white star with the blue background because to go into the flag. And that's what's in the book. But I wanted to show you the versatility of this block that you can do it in scrappy squares. I can't fit this quite down here. Okay, here we go. So again, just like my grandma's donuts, I grabbed my square bins and I showed you my um, square bins um, in the beginning of the video and I've shown them before. They're right here. Okay, these are my one and a half and I have tons of one and a half squares. And so I took those one and a half inch squares and I made this cute four inch block. Now, when I'm talking about finished blocks, when I say four inch, that's the finished size. Right now it measures four and a half inches, but look how cute that is. Okay, and they're all sewn the same way. This is sewn the same way, but this is using cut four and a half inch squares. This is one and a half inch squares. And then this is using the two inch squares. Okay. And let me get my little, I got this little paper for you too, that I'll show later. I'll show you so you can take a screenshot of that. But this is a six inch block and it's made with two inch squares. Okay, so I grabbed my bin of those. And then this one right here, I'm skipping the eight inch block because that's what I'm going to show you how to make with two and a half inch squares. This one is, oh, let me show you that one first. This one is a 10 inch block and it's made with three inch squares. Okay. And then this one is a 12 inch block made with three and a half. And then again, we skip up to two and a half. But let me show you this quilty math. Once again, I've done this math for you. So you can do a screenshot right there. And why don't we do it, let's do one more. Let me hold it right here just so that you can see. If you do that screenshot, you can see those measurements and you can see what the patchwork star looks like, okay? So let's talk about this quilty math for just a minute. So I showed you that if you use one and a half inch, you get a four inch block. Two inch squares, you get a six inch. Two and a half, eight inch, three inch, ten inch, three and a half, twelve inch. You can see that these are in two inch measure, you know, increments right here, and these are in half inch. So the only size that I did not do that I'm showing you up to a 14 inch is this is a 16 inch block. But if you were to use four inch cut squares, you would get a 14 inch block. Okay, I just don't have one of those to show you. But what I love about this is you only need 12 prints for each patchwork star. 
You need 12 squares of just a variety of prints, and then you need 12 backgrounds. So it's super easy to remember. This recipe is like 12 and 12. 12 background, 12 prints. Now, it's the same for this one right here in the book. 12 background, 12 prints. You're just using all blueprints, and you're just reversing where the backgrounds and the prints go. Okay? So you could also do that with these fun, scrappy, happy colors too. These could be the inside and you could be using all of these on the outside and then sewing that together would be really fun. You would just have a scrappy quilt, backgrounds, squares with white stars or background stars, I should say. Okay, so I hope you like that recipe. And how I'm showing you to do these stars is exactly the way that it's shown in the book, okay? It's my easy, easy method. Then I have something fun to show you at the end too, another project. But what I'm gonna do is show you what I have started here. Let me slide. Miss Lucy, I'm sewing with Miss Lucy today. This was my first, very first painted Singer Featherweight. And yes, she's vintage, of course, as all the Singer Featherweights are. And my husband bought her, he found her and bought her for me and surprised me for my birthday many, many years ago. So this is my very first one and it was already painted and everything. And I don't know where he got it from and he can't remember, but he found it online. So, so it's Miss Lucy named after Lucille Ball, of course. Okay. So let me show you here. So what we have is this is how you start out this block. Okay. You take three of the, you're going to make four patches. You're not, you know, you may look at this block and say, oh, I need to do a bunch of half square triangles and then sew it together in rows. Nope, that's not how I make this block. This is super easy peasy. You just do four patches with one background in the corners. Okay, that's how you start out. And you press the seams open. Okay, and that's going to make it really easy to sew together. And then because you've used four backgrounds, you have eight left over. And those are going to become your easy corner triangles. I like to do the easy corner triangles like this and then sew the block together. It's so easy and it saves on bulk. It's more accurate and than just making eight half square triangles and then sewing in rows. You've got that bulk of your half square triangles in the seams already sewn this way. I'm already sewing it. It's, it's hard to explain until unless you do it the other way, and then you'll see how much bulkier that is in the seams. So this is what we're gonna do. I've shown you several times how to do my half square triangles. I use the center line right here, and I'm just gonna grab this, and I know that I'm gonna do a half square triangle here and a half square triangle here. And so I'm just gonna grab any background. I'm not gonna use this one because this would be green and green. So I'm just gonna grab the next one. So I just try to use different colors within each block, and that's how I do these squares too. I just grab 12 squares in different colors, or if I have two the same color like these, I just make sure they look different and then they're in a different area of the quilt. And I just start on the corner here, and then I'm lining this up, and I'm following this corner of the square along this center line. And then I'm just going to grab this one and I'm going to do the same thing. And I know it's easy to know which ones to do the easy corner triangles on. I don't want to do it the one opposite of the background. I want to do it on the two print sides besides, beside the background. Okay, so I've got all these easy corner triangles on. And what I'm gonna do is come on over here and I'm gonna press, you know, press the seams like just setting them. 
So we'll see how those goes a little bit flatter right there instead of kind of wrinkly when you sew. Then I just grab my scissors and I just trim, you know, I don't know, approximate quarter inch. It's already sewn, so it doesn't matter, but I do not like to, you know, to trim really small. So I try to keep it at a quarter inch or, you know, sometimes I go a little bit smaller, but I just eyeball it. I like to use long, long scissor blades. Okay, set those aside. And then what I'm gonna do is even though I've pressed the squares open, I'm gonna go ahead and press these away. And I did this in all of the blocks. And so I just press towards the triangle. I just use the tip of my iron. See, I kind of pull this a little bit. Use the tip of my iron to make sure that's completely out. I'll just go ahead and don't want any pleats in that triangle. I want to make sure that I can see those threads a little bit where I sewed. And I put these clappers on and then just move down as I get more room. I have a nice hot vintage iron with no steam. If you want to know about my vintage irons, why I don't use steam and all that stuff, I always leave a link to my irons and all about my ironing boards and things like that. How to buy my vintage irons, uh, not mine, how to buy vintage irons and you know, how I look for them and kind of what my requirements are. And so there's always a link there. Oh, threads all over my jeans. What else is new, huh? I use this, I'll be using that when I press the seams open. Okay, so I'm gonna let that cool for just a minute. And while I'm letting that cool, let me show you a little sneak peek. This is a sneak peek of one of the pair of my new scissors. Okay, so of course, Riley Blake Designs is gonna produce them. And it says Lori Hold to be in my bonnet. Can you see that in the lighting? Mm, I'm trying to. Here, let's here. bring it over here. Let me hold it so I can. It's super tiny, so it's hard to see. But lighting from the window. Yep. Anyway, it says Lori Hold to be in my bonnet and has my little bee on there. And these are in denim. I'm gonna have three colors, but I love these longer blades for getting in there and snipping the threads in there. These are going to be really fun. They're really nice scissors. Okay, so that's probably cool enough. Let's bring this back over here. And I don't even know. I didn't have memorized how I had these set up. I know I had the yellow in there for some reason. I remembered that. But I have no idea other than I had this green background here. I remember that, right? So that probably means that I had the blue there and the pink there because the reason I know that is because usually when I set up a block, I'll do warm tones opposite from each other, like when I'm doing a square like this, and cool tones. So I consider pinks, yellow, reds, oranges, browns, warm tones, and then I consider cool tones like the blues, greens, grays, you know, things like that. So that's just a little kind of what I do scrappy. And so now what I need to do is I've got this little what I call tulip shape because I've done my easy corner triangles. All I have to do is simply sew this together. And it's so fast. I just use my quarter inch seam like this. And I just, I can see these slanted lines right here. And I just make sure those are lined up right there. Just doing a regular quarter inch, which is this line right here on my Seam So Easy guide. Um, I've had questions about where you can get this. You can get this in lots of quilt shops online. Just do a search of Seam So Easy by Lori Holdeby in my bonnet, and you'll find lots of quilt shops that carry my guide. Okay. So then, I'm just going to do the other side. I'm going to line these little triangles up down here 
and make it work. I, um, I could pin if I wanted to, but I just find if I've cut accurately and sewn accurately, I can use my fingers and that kind of works fine. All right. Now I've got those two sewn together. Once again, I'm going to come over and set these seams. Oh, a little stray, stray triangle from trimming. That one looks for some reason. I might have my seam, my thread set just a little bit tighter than I normally do. So let me pull that out. Um, when I'm sewing with seams open, I do like to have my stitch set a little bit smaller. Now on the featherweight, it's just a little bit higher than 12. You know, that's how you set it. And so I normally do like a 12 and then I just go up a little bit higher on my featherweight, okay? When I'm doing my appliques, um, I have a tinier stitch and I go up even higher. So it's hard to tell you what that compares to on like your Bernina or whatever, but I'm just kind of showing you. Okay, so this is where I use my roller because I'm definitely gonna use these seams open and I especially wanna push right here for a minute on that seam, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I just kind of open it up with my fingers to get it started. And then I love to use this because I want to make sure this thing is open all the way and there's no pleats in it. Okay, I don't like to use a rounded one. I like to use a flat one. I find with a rounded one, it's easy to get those pleats. Okay, and then I press on it with an iron. So I'm going to grab this, leave it on there for you know a few seconds to get it nice and hot so that this clapper can do its job. Let me pull that away so that, and then I just set the clapper on there and let them cool. And then I'm gonna quickly sew that together. I normally would leave that for a few more minutes, but um, you know, I don't know, minutes, I'd probably do it 30 seconds more or something like that. But I don't want you to have to sit there and wait for 30 seconds. So now I'm just gonna bring that over and I wanna make sure that I line up this center seam and that these all line up. You can pin them if you'd like to. I like to use my um, double pins when I do that in the center, just to make sure that I just poke in and make sure that I have a pin on each side. If you don't have a double pin, then use two pins. And then what I do here Instead of pinning, I don't, the reason I don't like to pin is because I feel it distorts the blocks a little bit. And that's why I only just kind of poke that in. And I just kind of line that up, hold it that way. I'd rather have the outside be a little uneven than the inside and not have the seams line up. I hope that makes sense. You know, I, I want it to all be even, but sometimes we don't have a choice. And so when I have to make a decision, Okay, we're getting to that pin and you can sew over it. I made them so they're thin enough so that you can sew over it if you'd like. I just go slowly. And then I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna make sure that that next thing lines up and you can see that I have to do a little bit of give with this pink fabric and that's okay. That's how you make things line up. And now, now I'm just worried about this bottom corner and that's gonna be perfect right there. And I'm staying right here on this red line of the quarter inch. Okay, let's see, I've got a bunch of scraps of fabric over here. Normally I'd be doing my bonus quilting and I'm gonna be showing you something that I did for the last little bit in my bonus quilting, another cute little project. So stay tuned. Okay, so I'm gonna press that. You can see that this is just a little bit where I gathered that up to make sure that that matched, but see, it wasn't enough that it's gonna show there. So before I press to make sure I don't wanna use my little seam ripper here, I'm just gonna make sure that everything matches up good and I think it looks great. Okay. All right, so. Again, I'm using two and a half inch squares. I used 12 two and a half inch prints. I should have used this first. I can tell that I didn't. 
and 12 background prints in two and a half inch square. And this is going to be an eight and a half inch block. And I'm going to do something that sometimes I do where I press from the front and then I put the clappers on there kind of when I have a block finished. I'll press from the front and then I'll stick the clappers kind of down the center. And again, I've talked about quilty physics before. I don't know, for some reason, I feel like this gets them flatter. I use a lot because I press a lot of blocks at the same time. So I have this many clappers and I'm like, why not take advantage of it and just stack them up? It looks like instead of Jenga, I'm gonna play quilter's clapper, right? Okay, so I'm gonna let that cool for a minute. And I think I told you wrong when I, I think I said I was gonna show you the 12 inch, but I can't remember what I said, but again, this is the four inch. Okay, this is the six inch, the eight inch is under here, and this is the 10 inch, and this is the 12 inch. I'm just showing you again because I wasn't sure if I said that right, but I mean, you can obviously see the graduation in the sizes. Okay, and let me grab this out because that's what I'll be putting my eight inch block on. And so what I wanted to show you was, um, in fact, let me just open this up and show you how many one and a half inch squares. I have two bins of one and a half inch squares. And these are just 1930s, so I keep them in a separate thing for separate projects if I wanna do. But this one is full of one and a half inch squares, and this one right here is full of one and a half inch squares. So I definitely have a ton, you can see, in this one that I have, let me show you a peek. I have a bunch of reds right here, and I have a bunch of denims right here, and then I have a bunch of backgrounds right here. I had a lot more, okay, a while ago of those three colors, because, let me show you what I did. I'm excited to show you this. Let me pull it over here. Okay. Look what I did. Can you see that, sis? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm gonna set it down here so we can talk about it. All right, so remember when I said that my flag quilt was made up of all squares. Let me turn to this again. So, this is all squares in the book and we started with four and a half inch squares and it ends up being 72 tall by 96. Well, because those are four and a half inch squares, just like with the block increments, what I told you, you can make this whole entire quilt with different size squares, no matter what size the squares are. You could do them all in three inch squares, all in two inch squares, they just all have to be the same size, right? So because I have so many one and a half inch squares, I have the most of that, I decided to make this cute little flag with one and a half inch square. So I didn't have to cut anything. I didn't have to cut anything for any of these blocks. In fact, I just took, you know, my two inch square bins for that and my three inch square bins for that and my three and a half inch square bins for that and just grabbed 12 of each color. But I always seem to have more one and a half inch squares than anything just because I save all of my little leftovers. And so look how cute that is. So this ends up being a quarter of the size of the quilt. You could do a half size with two and a half inch squares instead of four and a half, and it would end up being half the size of this quilt, right? It would end up being 36, 36 tall by, what's half of 96, 45, 48. Okay, just wanna make sure I don't tell you wrong. So if you use two and a half inch squares, you could make a 48 inch by 36 inch flat quilt. This one measures 24 inches by 18 inches tall. And I just simply used scraps. And I used my, as I was making these, this is a, this is a, these are the four inch blocks like this. So they're four and a half inches unfinished. And so of course I used my trim it rulers. I made these into four patches and then sewed them all together. So I did not, just like in the book, I did not, you know, do it any different 
but you could sew these into rolls if you wanted to, but I just sewed them into four patches. I just grabbed scraps, sewed them into four patches, and then I sewed those four patches together. Same with the red. So it was really fun. I pressed everything open. So everything's all open except for, again, these easy corner triangles I pressed towards there, just like I did in the book. Even with the four inch, you could press those open if you wanted. Um, I just wanted to show you what I did, but I can't wait to quilt this. I'm going to quilt it really tight, probably, and just bind it. And it's going to be a really fun wall hanging to go with my other, other different flag quilts. I have several flag quilts that are wall hangings that are mini quilts, and I like to hang them all together. So this is just another one to add. You could take border fabric of any, any border fabric. In fact, I'm going to move these over so I can pull this quilt in. Um, you could take any border fabric... And when you're doing a pillow, I would definitely add border fabric around here. So you could pick any of these, any of these that are used in the quilt and add like a wider piece if you're making it into a pillow because I want to see the whole entire flag. I don't want to see it wrapped around like a pillow, but that's just kind of my personal, personal taste. So let me set this up here real quick and I'm going to pull this down. I don't think I'm going to, I just kind of want to show you the stars and a little bit up close, all the different backgrounds, all the different colors of backgrounds, okay, and all the different reds. And then the back is I use my wide back with this blue plaid. And then I wanted to show you that I did, let me fold it over this way, I did a scrappy binding of just all the backgrounds and that's it is explained in the book and just as I was you know going through my background fabrics and cutting then I just went through and cut strips for that and you know I have a whole section on scrappy binding in my book and if that quilt has scrappy binding um, that particular quilt in the pattern it explains this and maybe you can see the quilting in that I'm not sure what that pantograph is called but it's stars with swirls around it, which I thought was perfect for that. Okay, and of course my friend Julie Stubbs um, quilted that. And that's that. That's that flag. Here's my, this should be cool. I like to keep this under here quite a while to cool um, when the block is finished. See how that just flattens it nicely. Let's grab the design board. So now we have all five sizes of this anyway. Right there, that eight inch block. And that can kind of go there in its place. I'll take a picture of all five sizes and so that you can see that in the opening of the video. All right, so that was my little tutorial all about squares and my patchwork stars and all the different sizes and what you can do with it and different size flag quilts. And um, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for, you know, watching my channel, for subscribing to my channel, especially. It really helps me when you subscribe to my channel and it helps me to grow my channel so that I can bring more content to you. I'm going to be continuing with my Sew Your Stash series and kind of going along with the Scrappiness is Happiness book Sew Along for the next, you know, couple of times. And so I will be back next week where we will be talking about squares again. And it's going to be the Patchwork Tulip. So I'm going to talk about squares because the top is really fun. Um you know, to use squares in. This one is three and a half inch squares, okay, that you're gonna do for the top of those tulips. And uh, I'll show you that quilt, how I used a dark background, and that's gonna be really fun. But, you know, once again, you know me, I just may have a few different sizes and a few, uh, you know, a few, a few other recipes or quilty math pages for my patchwork tulips. And so, once again, thanks for joining me, and I'll chat with you later.